Hi guys, this is Tracy with Inside Pool Magazine. As you know, I've been a big support for the juniors here the past couple of months, and I've been doing podcasts for a lot of these junior players, and they are junior players coming from all over the United States wanting on this podcast. Um, I feel personally that these kids need a, a platform where they can voice their opinions, and those opinions get out to the viewers and some of the other bigger organizations that are doing a lot for the juniors. They do have some concerns, and they have very, you know, they need somewhere that they can speak out. And that's the reason why I'm doing this. Next up, we have Ethan from New Jersey. Um, you remember D'Angelo Spain, he was out of Maryland. So we have another one from the New England area. I'm going to run Ethan's video and let you guys get a little bit of what Ethan has to offer. And then we'll have Ethan and his mom on the podcast soon. So check it out. This is Ethan Drudge. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Mom. How are we today? Hi. Awesome. Ethan, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, your age, your location, your pool room that you hang out at? I'm 16. I'm from South Jersey. Uh, I play out of the uh, it's Thirsty Hound in South Jersey. And, uh, okay, I need you to speak up just a little bit, a little bit of the background noise. That way everyone can hear you, sir. Yeah, Thank I'm you. I'm 16. I'm from South Jersey, and I play out of South Jersey. How many tournaments do you hit normally a year since you began playing, that is? It varies. It's like my first year playing competitively. Uh-huh. So I've gotten to about probably about like four or five. Awesome. So, so uh, from what I gather from your mom, hi, mom. Um, hey, you are actually, you started playing when you were a child, right? Well, you were interested when you were a kid, but you didn't get more competitive and wanting to play more until you were about 15. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let me pull up some of these questions for you guys. Uh, Mom, have you noticed a difference in his play from when he first started? Oh, definitely. He's come a long way um, just being out here at the billiards. He's gotten a lot of help from a lot of the guys that are here playing all the time. They've really welcomed him and done a lot to help him out and improve his game. Fantastic. And the pool room owners are, are really good about ha allowing you guys in the room, I'm assuming. They are. They are. In fact, they have a league night here tonight, and they've always been welcoming. They hold um, part of the juniors um, APA league here um, at this location. And they so both you guys, do you, tournaments. Awesome. Do you guys have a big junior league out of that area? It's not too big. I want to say there's probably 30, 30 to 40 kids in general. Okay, that's that's pretty big considering we don't have, I don't think we have that many in my area. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we have one small junior league here. So do you guys are able to compete against each other, Ethan, fairly regularly? Is it a weekly thing or are you guys doing monthly? We usually do it every two weeks, and uh, we just play two matches uh, each uh, time we come here. For are you playing eight ball, nine ball, ten ball? What are you playing during league? Uh, we play nine ball with APA rules. Okay, nice, nice. Is there a particular um, game that you like better than the other, Ethan? I like nine ball the best. Nine ball the best, awesome. Okay, mom, do you play as well? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. What about dad? Teach me. <laughs> what about dad? Does dad play as well? Dad does play. Dad plays on a lot of teams. That's kind of where he started to, to get into it and really follow. And he would go out with dad and he'd watch everybody play. And then he just wanted to be part of it. Awesome. Awesome. How many tournaments have you, uh, how many larger tournaments have you gotten to play in, Ethan? Uh, I got to play in the Expo this year. Then I played in the uh, 
a pro-am out actually out of the pool hall. We had a few the first we had Fed Ward Horse, Christian Decott, uh, Matt Crawl, Jason Shaw, and Darren Appleton with Allison Fisher commentating. That Fantastic. Was, How did you do with that tournament over at Super Billiards Expo? How did you do? I won my first round at eight to one, and then I got in my head the second round. I couldn't get back out of it. That happens. And that place is um it's it's a little different than your normal bar. It's so airy. It feels like it's a little humid inside the building. Um, I was there a few years ago, and they had like a little cold spell with a rain that had drifted through, and it felt a little damp inside the building closer to the doors. Did you feel any difference in the different areas that you were playing at, Ethan? Was it different from one side to the other? The table that I played on, they played great they were fast uh i guess, i think it was just a little weird because it's so open and it's just the players who are playing in the tournament like on the other side of the table it's not like anybody can walk up it's right. your opponent, which is so do you different. feel comfortable in these tournaments these bigger tournaments do you feel pretty comfortable i, I like those tournaments better than uh like ones that anybody can come over to because it's it's just me and i feel more independent and i feel like i don't know i just feel stronger in those. okay your son has a level head on him mom good job he does, <laughs> he does. can you tell me where you Paul. He's talked to a lot of people. They've got, given him a lot of pointers. Um, he has a coach, um, Teresa Tascarella from Tascarella Cues, has helped him out, and they, they kind of like give him ideas of, you know, this is this is your game. Get out of your head. Move on to the next ball. Uh, I think uh, somebody told him the balls don't have a memory. Just play the table. Right. I think uh, Joey Gray had told a child once before, "You've got uh, 30 seconds." To have your come apart, and then that's it. <laughs> no more. Get back at the table and do it. That's that time out for yourself. Let's see. And where are you guys at right now? We are at South Jersey Billiards right now. I see something behind you. It says the Thirsty Hound. Is that where you're located currently? Yes. Currently? yes Fantastic. And um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to drag the owner on the podcast so he can tell you a little bit about his uh, play. <laughs> We're going to do that a little later. Um, Mom, will Ethan have the opportunity to show us a little bit of his skills? Is there a table that he's going to be allowed to hit a couple of balls on for us? Oh, fantastic. You let Bob know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see. What else? And uh, right now, where is your uh, school at? Would you like to plug that school for us? I go to Tartan Regional High School in Runnymede. Uh, I just got out of my sophomore year. I'm going into my junior year. Um, I just got to get done two more years there. Oh. And um, Ethan has a Fargo rating, ladies and gentlemen, of 413, an APA rating of 5, but he's only been playing for a year. Uh, this could change drastically within this first six, within the next six months. If you guys remember, Joey Gray had taught our one of our first little podcast girls, a little healthy, a little bit, and she is gaining momentum. So these kids are like sponges. They pick up something and they run with it and they are fast learners. So you'll be seeing Ethan on the circuit and the juniors very, very soon, I promise you. At what age did you begin your love of pool, Ethan? I first like picked up a cue probably about four. But then I, I believe your mom sent me a little picture of you, adorable. Yeah. I, I didn't really start playing competitively and care for it until about like fourteen or fifteen, and then just the past year I've been playing competitively, and just putting myself out there in situations that I just don't feel comfortable in, but to get comfortable in them. I believe um, one of the uh, Nick DeLeon, which is my co-host on my regular show, um, he always says, you know, the only way you can get better is if you put yourself in in a, a more difficult situation. That's life for you. So you're doing the right thing. Just keep going for it. Keep going for it until you feel so comfortable. It's like walking in the kitchen. <laughs> And we do have Bob here. He is the owner of South Jersey Billiards on the Thirsty Hand. 
Okay, we're gonna bring him on as soon as I'm finished with Ethan. Hi, Bob. How are you? We'll, we'll go ahead and let you talk, though. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about your place and uh, what you're doing for our juniors? Uh, so uh, my business partner and I bought the place in June of 2020. Uh, we've made some improvements. We've we've really upgraded the equipment. We we bring the kids in. The kids all you know never pay to play. You know, so we bring them in here. We get them, you know, all the time they can on the tables, and uh, you know, just want them to have a good time. That's all. Well, thank you so much. Could you give us an address and the name of your place, sir? Uh, it's the Thirsty Hound in South Jersey Billiards. It's at 600 North Whitehorse Pike in Somerdale, New Jersey. Well, thank you so much. Do you offer food in your location? Uh, full kitchen, full bar. Uh, 20, 23 pool tables. Are they bar boxes? Do you have bar boxes and uh, regulation tables? Or are they all? Yeah, we have, we have 18 bar boxes and uh, five big tables, two full-size diamonds and three gold prints. Awesome. Fantastic. What about parking? Uh, parking, we have a lot of league players. So, uh, you know, we fill the place up, but I mean, we, parking's okay. You know, we can always use more parking spots. Uh, well, always. <laughs> what about uh, hotels? What hotels are close to your venue? Uh, we have the Marriott. Uh, we have, um, there's a few. There's a, I think there's eight uh, hotels within five miles. Okay, perfect. Perfect. You know, and, and all named, you know, all, all known hotels, not like, you know, motels, just full. Right. Like okay, that way when we have people coming in that area, then they know where to stay. Uh, do you offer any tournaments? Do you have monthly tournaments? We have uh, we have Friday night ball tournament, Sunday eight ball tournament every week. Uh, we're affiliated with the Pool Players Care Charity. Uh, they do usually at least one tournament a month or every other month that we do uh, and for different charities throughout the year. Uh, those are held on Saturdays. Uh, we have the Mez tour that comes through. We have, um, you know, the the APA holds their tournaments here. The local TAP holds their tournaments here. So we have a lot of tournaments. Good. Uh, yeah, we're filled up. We're starting to take tournaments for the beginning of next year already. So fantastic. Since COVID has uh, settled down a little bit, has business picked up for you, Bob? Uh, it, it did. And then, you know, with summertime, pool drops off a little bit. So, right. You know, uh, we, you know, and we do special stuff to try to get people in here and, and uh, you know, the leagues help us out. So that's good. Absolutely. Well, hopefully this helps you out a little bit as well. You I know, and if there's it. any, <laughs> if there's anything you can, you need from me or inside pool magazine, just hit me up, ask Don for um, my link and I'll be more than happy to plug any of your tournaments for you, sir. I appreciate what you're doing for the juniors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Guys. All right, I have a couple of things. Uh, Taylor Olive says that, that's my man's right there. <laughs> and one more. Um, Persistent Wolf Billiards says hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Persistent Wolf Billiards. And Miss Taylor, that's awfully sweet. <laughs> okay let's move on forward um it sounds like a fantastic place to play i can't wait to see ethan hit some balls on that table so let's keep going with some of these questions who has been your biggest motivator or support system so far just any really a lot of people that uh like the higher levels in the league just kind of tell me that i'll be something and that i have something and then just helping me out whenever they can well, that's fantastic. You know, it takes a village to rage a pool player. I keep telling these people that in order to get you better, we have to give you the time. So uh, do you have anybody you would like to plug any names? I know dad is itching for you to say his name. Yeah, my dad, definitely, both my parents for funding pool, I guess. Uh, John Tobin, Teresa Tascarella for getting me sponsored. Bob for the, the pool hall. Awesome. Okay. What has been your biggest accomplishment to date? Uh, just being able to play like against Fiddler Horst and Christina Tkach and all of them during the program. So I was like surrounded by them. Um, right. It's like being around a bunch of celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> 
was nervous. It was nerve wracking, but I did a lot better than I thought I was going to. Um, those nerves will actually fade once you get used to it. Once you get into the get more, um, more, more table time behind you and being out at more events, all of those nerves will just go away. Now, some people actually like that those nerves it gives them that adrenaline to make them push them harder. So you just got to figure out which one works for you. Hey, uh, do you have a favorite pool player? Uh, I like Federer Morris. And, uh, I base a lot of my game and my stance on how he plays. He's also only five years older than me. And then uh, um, Jason Shaw, I got to meet him at the Expo. I got to meet him at the Pro Am, and he's just the nicest guy. Ever. Yes, he is. He's, yes, he is. Yeah, he's super nice. Okay. You have a fan out here in the chat, sir. <laughs> Let's see. What has been your biggest lesson so far? You, got, you have to have the memory of a goldfish. It's, if you miss a shot, you got to forget about it and move on. If you lose a, a back, forget about it and move on. Even if you win your match, just forget about it and move on. There's, right. Nothing can change the past. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I love that theory. I love it. Let's see. What is one tournament you would like to play in and why? I'd love to play in the Moscone Cup because it's just so it's such a cool tournament to have the best players from America and Europe face each other in like a team setting. Mm -hmm. Don't really get that in anything else in pool. Have you played in any Scotch doubles tournaments? Yeah, I played in one with my dad. We won that. And I played awesome. another one with Brett Stoudemire down in Maryland. And then we won that as well. Okay, congratulations. Doing really well there. Mom, has his grades ever suffered? During his yeah. time, no, he's he's pretty good, and he knows like if he's not going to keep up the schoolwork, we're not going to take him out to these tournaments. Like you have to do your real work before you get to you know do all the fun stuff. Fantastic. What about um physically and mentally when he's at some of these tournaments, especially like Super Billiards Expo, and that is a long long tournament um, did you notice any mental or physical fatigue with him as the day drew closer to a close so at the expo no there was a lot of break in between um at the last tournament he did with brett the scotch doubles he had done that and then he ran right into a second tournament that day that was a very long day um it ran until like 11 o'clock at night and he was very tired by then did you notice any um any behavioral issues like it was he being a little snippy with the, any of the other players as the time drew near no, nothing like that he was just fantastic so i said he was checked out he was done he was done uh, i get that way too <laughs> persistent billiard says Federer is definitely a man to watch jason runs a pool hall here in my state where are you at currently persistent wolf billiards if you don't mind us asking <laughs> And let's see. What about education after after high school? Do you tend on going to college, or are you thinking um, of going pro? Obviously, obviously, I want to go pro. I don't really think college is for me. I don't really feel like I do in the classroom. There are several other trades you could do besides going to college, and it only take you a year to get through a trade. I highly recommend doing a trade to help fund your career in pool. And if something ever happens, you've got that to fall back on. And, uh, you know, and ever, anything can happen at, at this point, you know, in, in billiards itself. But we welcome Connecticut into the chat room. Thank you so much, sir, for being here and supporting our, our juniors. But um, I would think about that. I mean, you never know. Things are sneaky in life. You never know what's going to happen, right, Mom? <laughs> Let's see. How do you think you handle the pressures of being on the table when you're, especially if you're down several games? How do you handle that, Ethan? Do you have uh, something that you tell yourself? When you're down uh, several I used to let it get to me, and then I would completely check out the views. But then the past few tournaments, I know one tournament, it was a race to seven. I was down five to one. 
then I went to the bathroom, came back, and got on the hill. And I ended up losing the next two racks, but I was able to get myself out of my head and continue on. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. I mean, it's tough. It's tough for us adults. Once we start getting, you know, if it's a race of seven and we're down four games, we're starting to freak out just a little bit. <laughs> I know I did. I was always told, take a deep breath, take a break, and wash your face, and then come back. <laughs> I have a, a question out in the chat. Persistent Billiards wants to know from you, Ethan, do any of you, uh, do any of the junior players inspire you, sir? Savannah is probably one of the ones that she's just works hard and she she's just naturally good and she works uh, for it. Like at the XO, I saw her, she was down. She wasn't getting anything. She, went, she took her time out. She came back to the table and hit that same shot she kept on missing until she didn't miss it again. And then she didn't miss it again in the tournament. So, yeah, no she's sorry. definitely someone to look up to. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad that you guys support each other. It, it really does help each one of you if you're supporting each other. Even if you have to play against each other, always support each other. Okay. Do you currently have a practice regime? I like to, uh, it's this Darren Appleton draw I like to start off with. It's, um, it's like for timing and tempo. Uh, it's one that really helped me and kind of helped me be able to draw and just put more cue ball uh, action on the cue ball. And there's, um, I like to do a mighty extra that uh, I saw for Christina Picasso. And I really just like to just run racks. Sounds good. How many hours of play do you get in a week? Practice one. And now that in the summer, I try to play as much as I can whenever I can. But during okay. the school year, I try to pretty much as soon as I get home until like one day. So probably like close to like seven hours a day. Okay, that sounds good. Do you have a pool table at home, Ethan? Yeah, we have a, uh, we have a diamond pro am set for it. Nice, nice. That helps a lot when you have a, a table at home where mom and dad don't have to get out of the house when they've worked long hours. <laughs> we have a tendency not want to leave once we unpack. <laughs> Let's see. Mom, do you feel like the junior players are getting the support that they need from the media and, you know, the, uh, the media, the the other tournament directors, the venues? Do you feel like Ethan and the rest of them are getting the support that they need from us? I think it's very difficult to find a juniors tournament. We sign Ethan up for a lot of chip tournaments. He plays with a lot of adults. Um, the Rally at the Valley with the Expo was the first time he really ever got to play against a bunch of other juniors. Um, there's not a lot local. It's stuff that you have to drive um, or fly yeah. out of state for. So in that aspect, I'd like to see more of that. Okay. Ethan, what do you think? Do you think you guys are getting the support that you need, or do you think we could do better? I think on a like a pro junior level, yes, but like amateur level, I feel like there's not enough people who are willing to do it. It's only if you really have a kid or not. But I don't really ever see parents without kids up here that are good players. But definitely like the, the, the higher, like the JIC level, I feel like they get a lot of support. Well, we need to start somewhere. So hopefully there's someone out there in your state that's listening that can help Bob and the other venue that you play out of host some more junior tournaments because I think it's important that you guys get to play against each other as well, not necessarily just the, just the adults. And that will give you a little more, um, a little more practice time in for the, the JIC with Rahana. I mean, I honestly believe it helps if you guys get to play against each other a little more. And we have another family member in the house. That's my nephew. Way to go, E. <laughs> and we have uh, Persistent Wolf says, JIC is definitely a travel tournament setting. I think there should be more local junior tournaments. I agree, sir. I agree. And I know one of our halls here in Connecticut runs a JIC program. Not sure about the tournaments, though. Will you let Connecticut know that the Diva's watching, sir? Okay, let's see. Let's continue. 
if you could fast forward 10 years, where do you see yourself in the billiards industry, Ethan? I would, I would hope to be pro and win a muscle, or not muscle, but a couple of US Open. Hopefully a World Pool Championship or Masters, you know, when I get in a bunch of matching events, really. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Look out, Nick Dillion. He's coming for your job, sir. I might need a new co-host. <laughs> Okay. What advice would you give to newcomers? Say a little kid that's 10 years old walked up to you and says, I love the fact that you play pool. What do you, what kind of um, advice would you give to that kid on how to get started? Just do it. Just do it. Go for it. Yeah. Really, <laughs> stop. Right. Mom, what advice would you give to the parents of a child that wants to start playing pool? Do you have any advice for the parents? Uh, you know, really just take your kids out there, support them. Um, you know, it, it's good. It's better than being in front of a video game all the time. I agree. It's a mental aspect. and It's a little bit more thought, you know, involved in it. I think it's good for them. I think it also promotes a healthy way of teaching them patience. And, and you know, and there's a lot of uh, mathematics involved in pool. So it's teaching them it's teaching them a lot and also how to interact with each other in a in a manner that is that is different than what they're used to doing. They're used to yelling at each other through a video game and this teaches them how to interact with each other in, in a manner that's a little more supportive. So I think it does a, it does a lot of good. Also, um, I've noticed uh, kids that have disciplinary problems seem to do better if they do have a pool cue in their hand and they're learning how to play. It's that mental toughness that they're getting and also teaching them how to have manners. So I agree with you, Mom. Absolutely. Persistent Billiard says, I apologize if it's been asked already, but what is your current equipment setup? I haven't gotten that far yet, but I'm about to ask, Ethan. What's in your case, sir? I uh, I play with a Q Tech uh, Q Tech Exchange Band building in white. <laughs> with, I use this uh, six, uh, six inch extension with it, and I, I uh, have a Q Tech WCT break cue, and then I have the Air Two uh, jump cue from Predator. Fantastic. Do you use a glove when you shoot, Ethan? Yeah, I use a Molinari. What kind of glove do you have? I use a Molinari. Nice, very nice. Did you get that from Jason Shaw? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, John Tobin says, keep up the good work. Definitely one of my inspirations to stay humble, positive, and thank you. Thank you so much, John, for joining us tonight. Okay, let's see. And here's the big question, Mom and Ethan. If I had somebody like, let's say, Donald Trump or the Queen Elizabeth over in England and just handed me a big giant bag of money and said, you know, do what you need to do for these kids. Here's the money. What would you guys like to see me do with that money? Uh, definitely more junior tournaments. And some people, they can't buy a cube or something. So, like, uh, just get them, like, a, it doesn't have to be an expensive cube. Like, a lot of, like, the pros, just, like, a $100, $100 cube, which I started off with. And, um, something that's actually adequate enough to use. Yeah. Something that you can learn with. I got you. What do you think, Mom? What would you like to see me do with that money? Uh, well, in tournaments, it would be nice to have scholarship prizes. Right. Um, I feel like if there's more scholarships out there, you might even be able to bring it into a high school level where instead of just having a sport, maybe it could even be, you know, a sport introduced into, you know, the academic arena. I honestly believe that if we did have pool in school, it would benefit the, the kids that, that do have those issues that they can't focus because I think it does help. And um, all these people keep saying it's just a game, but it's not. It's a sport. And it takes a lot out of these kids. You know, just because you're not running <laughs> doesn't mean you're not doing something important, you know. And it, it's it's tiring because this is a it's a very mental game and it's very taxing when you're going long hours. It teaches you a lot of fundamentals that you're not getting from the other sports. So I agree with you 100 percent, Mom. Absolutely. Well, since we've come to the end of our question portion of the evening, Ethan, would you like to hit some balls for us, sir? 
Sure. All right, let's do this. <laughs> This is Ethan Drodge, everybody. He is out of New Jersey, representing the state of New Jersey with a Fargo rating of 413, APA rating of 5. He's been playing for only a year, and he is already an APA 5. So within the next six months, if this child keeps going at the rate that he's going, he will be up there around a 7 or an 8. So you guys keep a uh, watch on this kid. He's going to come after a couple of you guys. <laughs> so we're going to let Ethan hit a couple of balls so we can watch how he uh, gets his practice in. So if you guys have any questions for me or for Ethan's mom while he's hitting balls, you just let us uh, let us know. Just type that right on in the chat box there and we'll try to get those questions answered for you. We appreciate all of our followers and all of the fans out there that are watching these kids do what they love to do the best. They, all of these children are out there chasing their dreams. And that's what I'm here for is to make sure they're getting the support that they need with a little bit of exposure. We're also offering Mako Tips has teamed up with some with some professional players. And they've also teamed up with the Diva and Inside Pool Magazine trying to get a tournament put together that mimics the Moscone Cup for these kids. All of these kids will be put into a pool and they will be playing a, uh, a ghost type challenge to see which one of them gets to be put on a team. We will be pulling invite only people. We'll be pulling some ki 20 kids out of a bucket here and uh, placing them on teams. But we need your help. Ethan needs your help in order to get this whole dream accomplished. So go to www.makotips.com and check out that page and donate if you can. We will be selling jerseys as well and some of those proceeds will be going to this big tournament for these kids. As most of you know, once upon a time, we were kids, too. And we all had dreams that we wanted to be singers, doctors, lawyers, firemen, policemen, or whatever. These kids just want to play pool. And I think we can accomplish that by just donating a little bit of money to a fund that's going to help these children, not only for a tournament, but it could help some of these kids get the equipment that they need. Not every child can afford a queue. Not every child can afford to get to all of the places around the country that they need to get to in order to play this sport. So with your help, we can do that. And don't forget, our sponsors tonight are Team Purebred. Thank you so much. Casey Clark, you're the best. Also, Enterprise Car Rentals, if you guys are needing a nice ride when you're tra traveling and you're getting off an airline, check out Enterprise Car Rentals. We will have a link in the description box for you guys to get a discount on your car rentals. Also, Mako Tips is teaming up with the Diva and several professional players to put on a Moscone Cup type event for the juniors. Make sure you donate. This is the only way we can get this done.
that is, this is Ethan. He is 16 years old out of the state of New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen. He has a Fargo rating of 13. We had um, one of the owners on earlier, so you guys will be able to watch this again if you've missed it. The live version, you'll be able to watch it again after our broadcast so stay tuned and uh thank you so much for following us and supporting the juniors i'm gonna pop on out of here and let you guys watch this bit watch him hit some balls Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I guess Ethan checked on out. I was just letting him get his uh, game on. So, you guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight on Inside Pool Magazine's Billiard Talk Juniors Edition with Ethan Drodge. Also, remember, guys, these kids are out here doing what they love. This is what they do the best, and this is something that they enjoy. So let's not try to deter them from doing that. Um, we try to do what we can for our children as best as we can, and they are the future of our, our, our world. So if we're not supporting them, then they are not getting what they need. So anytime you see one of these kids out here doing what they do, make sure you shake their hand and give them props because they enjoy it. So on behalf of myself, Mako Tips, Enterprise Car Rentals, Inside Pool Magazine, Nick DeLeon, and Pure Breed, Team Pure Breed, thank you so much for uh, watching us tonight and have a great evening. 
You guys have a great, great evening, and we'll see you next time on Billiard Talk Juniors Edition. Good night.